From mid-January to the end of February of 2024, we took another of our snowbird adventures to escape the Ohio winter. This time we headed to Florida for warmth and sunshine. We really enjoyed the natural springs that Florida offers. Here are a few of them that we explored. Nestled in the heart of Florida is the beautiful Rainbow Springs State Park. Rainbow Spring is fed by a network of underground springs that boast a dazzling array of colors. We were told by the ranger that these springs produce the cleanest, clearest water in Florida. The springs pump out an impressive 465 million gallons of water daily, which makes it one of the largest artesian spring systems in Florida. We even saw a few people during our visit swimming in the designated swim area of the Head Spring. We learned Rainbow Springs officially became a state park in the 1990s. Prior to that, it was a privately owned attraction known as Rainbow Springs Attraction, which operated from the 1930s until it closed in 1974. After its closure, efforts were made to restore and protect the natural beauty of the area, leading to its designation as a state park. It was impressive to see the water bubbling up, not just from the head spring, but also all over the park. Many of the trails led us through remnants of the roadside attractions, starting with the beautiful man-made waterfalls as centerpieces of the well-appointed landscape. down the trails you can see the remnants of the zoo and the rodeo barn from the old roadside attraction. That path led us to the Yellow Trail which is a 2.6 mile hike. It was a lovely hike that took us to the park's diverse habitats including lush forests, open fields, and along the banks of the beautiful Rainbow River. It's just a little bit deep look around. We found the Rainbow River so enticing that we decided we couldn't pass up the opportunity to take a closer look. We rented a kayak and flotation devices and paddles from the local store, the camp store actually, uh, and then walked it down to the river. The water of the river was crystal clear and we were surrounded by the sights and sounds of nature. We paddled for about two hours and almost reached the head springs before we had to turn around and return due to changes in the weather. In warmer months, there is tubing on the river, but that activity was not available in January when we were visiting. The camp office has an interesting collection from when this was a roadside attraction. Apparently they had boat rides here back in the day. The park has three entrances, one at the springs, one for the campground, and a separate one for tubing. Something to note is that due to the park being surrounded by private property, it's not possible to hike from the campground to the springs. We discovered that there was a nature trail very close to the camping area. We decided to check that out, and along the way saw lots of wildlife.
From the vibrant colors of the Rainbow Springs to the serene beauty of its natural surroundings, Rainbow Springs State Park is a true Floridian treasure, and we loved our visit there. Less than an hour away from Rainbow Springs State Park is Silver Springs State Park. I was especially excited to visit this park since I have happy memories from when I visited there in my 20s. That was a few decades ago. Back then it was a privately operated venue, but similar to Rainbow Springs, the state took over the operation of this amazing place to help preserve it. I was happy to see that Silver Springs continues to operate their iconic glass bottom boats. views from the glass bottom boat were amazing. We could see underwater plants, fish, and we could see all that very clearly. We even got to see our first manatee. During the winter months, the manatee hang out in the springs where the water is a constant 72 degrees coming out of the springs. Once it gets warmer, most, but not all, of the manatees head out to sea. Silver Springs State Park, there are over 30 natural springs that pump out 550 million gallons of water daily, making one of the largest artesian spring formations in the world. Silver Springs was also used as a filming location for many movies and TV shows, including the movie The Creature from the Black Lagoon and the TV show Sea Hunt. I Spy is another show that was filmed here, and you can see the underwater statues that they used as props. We even got to see scuba divers exploring the limestone caves. Very cool. Not every cool thing we saw was underwater. We got to see some pretty amazing above water wildlife as well during the boat ride. After the boat ride, we explored the rest of the park, starting with the Discovery Center, where we learned about the history of the park. The park has a ton of hiking paths, and we started with the easier paths, where we learned about the feral monkey problem that they used to have in the park. I guess it's still a problem. They do still have it. We're given some important tips on what not to do if we encounter them. Specifically, don't look them in the eyes and avoid wild them if monkeys. at all possible. There's wild monkeys in Florida. Holy cow. There are a ton of trails, but it was getting close to closing time. Luckily, we were able to score a little snack before the food truck closed for business. We were literally the last customer. <laughs> Silver String has endless opportunities for outdoor adventure, and we would love to come back and camp here sometime. Along Florida's Gulf Coast, Homosassa Springs State Park offers visitors a unique opportunity to get up close and personal with native Florida wildlife. Plus one honorary member, but more on that in a bit. Our visit gets off to a strong start, with an amazing boat ride from the visitor center to the entrance of the springs. Visitors can also take a tram ride or walk to the entrance of the springs, but we recommend the boat ride. It was beautiful and informative, and we got to see quite a bit of wildlife along the way. Once we got to the springs, our first stop was the underwater observatory, where we got to see large schools of fish, 
swimming in the warm spring water. I had hoped to see manatees in the underwater observatory, but that didn't happen until a little later when we were walking around the garden and around the Hamosa River. And then there were a lot of manatees to see. We were stunned by the sheer number of them. One of the facilities at this park is the Manatee Care Center, where they treat and rehabilitate sick or young manatee and get them ready to be released back into the water. Manatees were definitely the highlight of our visit and somewhat drew us here, but we had the added bonus of seeing many other animals native to Florida. Why is it looking there? Not sure what this guy is doing, but we got a real kick out of him. Is this normal behavior for deer in Florida? I don't think Ohio deer do this, do they? Maybe. I don't know. One animal in the park that is not native to Florida is Lou the on. Hippo. Lou is an animal he actor is. and was housed at Homosassa Springs along with other animal acts that were trained for television shows and movies. Lou retired from show business but still resides at the park. He was even made an honorary citizen of the state by Florida Governor Lawton Childs. We enjoyed seeing all the different species of wildlife in one place. Perhaps not as exciting as seeing them in the wild, but it is nice to have some place dedicated to the display of the rich and diverse Florida wildlife. <laughs> we ended our visit by hiking Pepper Creek Trail back to the visitor center and the parking lot. Oranges on that tree. How cool is that? Less than a 30 minute drive from our campground was Three Sister Springs. It's named for the three spring vents that converge in this area and is part of the Crystal River National Wildlife Refuge. We were happy to find out that our National Parks Pass got us a discount in the refuge and we had mixed feelings about getting senior citizen discounts. While there are shuttles from the visitor center to the entrance, it's actually a very short walk across the street, so we decided to hoof it over instead of waiting for the next shuttle to arrive. We started at the scenic boardwalk that surrounds Three Sister Springs and were blown away by the crystal clear waters, as well as the large number of manatees. The springs are protected by various conservation organizations and government agencies, as is the critical habitat for the endangered West Indian manatee. There are very strict rules in effect during manatee season to ensure that the manatees are not disturbed. Not only visitors, but also the residents of the area must adhere to these rules. For example, kayakers and snorkelers are not allowed past the cordoned off areas. That is just for the manatees. Another example are homeowners with docks and boats are not allowed to launch during manatee season if it affects a cordoned off area. We found that fascinating. After attending a ranger talk where we learned a lot about the manatees, we hiked over to Ma Magnolia Springs and saw even more of the wonderful creatures. They're amazing, and we appreciate everything that Three Sister Springs is doing to help protect the manatees. We finished our visit by hiking the rest of the trails in the park before heading out. Oh, it's not a yard here sign. After leaving Three Sisters Springs, we decided to explore the city of Crystal River. Crystal River is often referred to as the manatee capital of the world due to its large population of West Indian manatees. The city is home to several springs, including Three Sister Springs, Hunter Springs, King Springs, and the namesake Crystal River Springs. Crystal River maintains its small town charm with tons of quaint shops and delicious dining options. But what has us most interested are the springs, so we head over to Hunter Springs. Hunter Springs offers a variety of recreational activities for visitors to enjoy. It's surrounded by a park. We saw people snorkeling, kayaking, paddleboarding, and there were a few manatees there as well. Yeah. 
About a 10 minute walk from Hunter Springs is Kings Bay River Walk and Park. After a busy day, it was nice to just sit and watch the water. We've loved being able to watch the manatees from afar, but we finally get the opportunity to see them up close and I couldn't be more excited. We're going swimming with the manatees. But first, we had to get on our wetsuits and learn the rules about interacting with manatees, which is basically, you don't touch them. <laughs> You just float as quietly as possible and let them do their thing. The tip was, act like a manatee. Our first try at seeing the manatees back at Hunter Springs failed. The day prior there were dozens, but today, not so much. So the captain took us to another area which seems to be someone's backyard. But we got to see them up close. It was an amazing experience and we had a great guide, great captain, and great fellow snorkelers. We learned a ton about manatees, and there's just nothing that can replace being this close to them and watching them in their natural habitat. There's a tremendous amount of effort going on in this part of Florida to uh, protect and salvage the manatees and let them thrive. And it's been working, and uh, I'd say we were both moved by the whole experience. Yes, we really appreciate everything that they do for the manatees. They're truly magnificent creatures.